Chapter 8, Section 4. Aren't the enclosures a socialist myth? The short answer is no, they're not. While a lot of historical analysis has been spent in trying to deny the extent and impact of the enclosures, the simple fact is, in the words of noted historian E.P. Thompson, enclosure was a plain enough case of class robbery and played accordingly to the fair rules of property and law laid down by a parliament of property owners and lawyers. Making of English working class, uh, page uh, uh, 237 to 238. The enclosures were one of the ways that the land monopoly was created. The land monopoly was used to refer to capitalist property rights and ownership of land by, among others, the individualist anarchists. Instead of an occupancy and use regimen, which advocated by uh, which was advocated by anarchists, the land monopoly allowed a few to bar the many from the land, so creating a class of people with nothing to sell but their labor. While this monopoly is less important these days in developed nations, few people know how to farm after all, it was essential as a means of consolidating capitalism. Given the choice, most people preferred to become independent farmers rather than wage workers. You can see more on that in the next section. However, the importance of the enclosure movement is downplayed by supporters of capitalism. Little wonder, for it's something of an embarrassment for them to acknowledge that the creation of capitalism was somewhat less than immaculate. After all, capitalism is portrayed as an almost ideal society of freedom. To find out that an idol has feet of clay and that we are living with the impact of its origins is something pro-capitalists must deny. So, is the enclosures a socialist myth? Most claims that it is flow from the work of the historian J.D. Chambers' famous essay, Enclosures in the Labor Supply in the Industrial Revolution. Um, you see more of that in Economic History Review, second series, number five, August, published August 1953. In this essay, Chambers attempts to refute Karl Marx's account of the enclosures and the role it played in what Marx called private accumu uh, primitive accumulation. We cannot be expected to provide an extensive account of the debate that r has raged over this issue, but... What can be provided is a summary of the works of William Lazenick, who, present, who presented an excellent reply to those who claimed the enclosures were an unimportant historical event. Drawing upon his summary of, ex, uh, of his excellent uh, essay, quote, uh, Karl Marx and Enclosures in England, uh, published in a review of Radical Political Economy, number six, summer of 1974, which can be found in his books, Competitive Advantage on the Shop Floor and Business Organization and the Myth of the Market Economy. There are three main claims against the socialist account of the enclosures covered each in turn. Firstly, it is often claimed that the enclosures drove the uprooted cottager and small peasant into industry. However, this was never claimed. It is correct that the agricultural revolution associated with the enclosures increased the demand for farm labor as claimed by chambers and others. And this is the whole point. Enclosures created a pool of dispossessed workers who had to sell their time and liberty to survive. The critical transformation was not the level of agricultural employment before and after enclosure, but the changes in employment, in employment relations caused by the reorganization of land holdings and the reallocation of access to land. See competitive advantages on the shop floor, page 30. Thus, the key feature of the enclosures was that it created a supply for farm labor, a supply that had no choice but to work for another. This would drive down wages and increase demand. Moreover, freed from the land, these workers could move uh, later move to the towns in search for better work. Secondly, it's argued that the number of small farm owners increased, or at least did not greatly decline, and so the enclosure movement was unimportant. Again, this misses the point. Small farm owners can still employ wage workers, i.e. become capitalist farmers as opposed to yeomen, independent peasant proprietors. As Lazenick notes, it is true that after 1750, some petty proprietors continued to occupy and work their own land, but in a world of capitalist agriculture, the yeomanry no longer played an important part in determining the course of a capitalist agriculture. As a social class that could, be in, that could influence the evolution of British economy, uh, economy and society, the yeomanry disappeared. Uh, competitive advantage on the shop floor, page 32. Thirdly, it's often claimed that it was population growth rather than enclosures that caused the supply of wage workers. So was population growth more important than enclosures? Maurice Dobbs argues that the centuries in which a proletariat was most rapidly recruited were apt to be those of slow rather than rapid natural increase of population. And the paucity or plentitude of a labor reserve in different co uh, countries was not correlated with com uh, comparable difference in their rates of population growth, sizing capitalist development, page 223. Moreover, 
The population argument ignores the question whether the changes in society caused by enclosures and the rise of capitalism have an impact on the observed trends towards earlier marriage and larger families after 1750. Lazenick argues that there, see, and there is reason to believe that they did. Also, of course, the use of child labor in the factories created an economic incentive to have more children, an incentive created by the developing capitalist system. Overall, Lazenick notes that to argue that population growth created the industrial supply labor, uh, labor supply is to ignore these momentous societal transformations associated with the rise of capitalism. Business organization, the myth of the market economy, page 273. In other words, there's good reason to think that the enclosures, far from being some kind of socialist myth, in fact played a key role in the development of capitalism. As Lazenick himself notes, Chambers misunderstood the argument concerning the institutional creation of a proletarianized workforce, i.e. landless. Indeed, Chambers' own evidence and logic tend to support the Marxian and anarchist argument when it is properly understood. 